Hey guys, welcome back. This is going to be the first video in a series of videos where I walk you through the steps of using a lab scope. Now, I'm going to try and alternate between several lab scopes that I own. Uh, my brother has an Autel lab scope. I've got the Zeus, the Modus. I have a couple of Pico scopes. So I'll try to change it up a little bit. Um, we may even throw some classics in there just to show you that you don't have to have the fanciest tool to do every job. Um, we're gonna start from kind of a low level with just basic equipment and work our way up. So if you wanna see the future videos of how we progress through this, make sure you subscribe, click the bell so you're notified of future videos. Now what I've also done is I started a Facebook group. I'll put a link to that down below. In that group, I'm gonna post up the test every week and a video to go along with it so that you guys can post your screen captures or your test results up on the screen. If you're having trouble, people can help you uh, figure out what's going on. It might just be a simple setting. It might be your cable, um, but I'll put a link to that group down below. So one of the most common tests that we are going to be performing is a voltage test. We're gonna be looking at a signal, a device, something, but we're gonna be looking at voltage. So that's what we're gonna start with, and we're gonna start with one of the co most common tests that I do on a vehicle, and that is a battery test. And I thought about doing just a simple, let's check the battery voltage, but really, if you connect it to the battery, we may as well do a starter test and an alternator test just to get a basic idea of where we're at. Um, because there's no additional cables needed, there's no additional hookup, at least for a baseline reading or, or basic results. If we need to go more in depth and we have a problem, yeah, we might need a few more accessories. Now for this test, we're going to need, if you're using a snap-on, we're gonna need the yellow test lead, unless you have something custom, but we're gonna need a power and ground. And on the yellow test lead, they are both built into each other. We plug them into the top of the scope. Yeah, those ports in the top of your scanner, those are for, a, for the lab scope. I know you've never used it before, but um, if you can't find the leads and it's a shop scanner, talk to them, maybe they have the box somewhere. Um, if you absolutely can't find this lead, grab the red and black lead off of your multimeter. If you have one, plug the red into the yellow port, the black into the black port, and you may have to throw some alligator clips on there, or you may actually have to hold the test lead to the battery for this test. So as you can see, the state of this battery is not the best. Um, of course, it's one of my personal vehicles, nice and corroded. Uh, they got universal marine terminals with wing nuts on there. Not the best looking stuff, but we're gonna test it anyways. Red is going to go to our positive terminal. Black is going to go to our negative terminal. And now we need to set up the scope to get a capture. And since I'm using my Zeus today, which will be the same as the Virus, but very similar to the Modus or Triton, we're going to, from the home page, click on the scope multimeter. Now there's several settings in here. We'll kind of go through those in the future, but we're going to go to lab scope. And since I'm using just the one channel, we can go to volts DC or we can go to four channel lab scope. Either one gets us to relatively the same place, but we'll go to volts DC. It should have channel one active already. Now, if you end up on a blank screen like this, then all you have to do is hit that top little eyeball. Um, furthermore, if you're at a screen like this and you can't see what to select, then up at the top, there's a data button that shows an eyeball or in a box. And down at the bottom, there's a box with a triangle. Both buttons do the same thing. I normally use the one at the bottom because it's just closer to where I normally have my stylus. And click that again. Now we have, you can, it kind of cycles through. There's three different screens. There's the scope view full size. There's a little setting screen that also shows us some live voltage. And then if we maximize that, we can change our settings. So I'm gonna turn on channel one, and it's already selected to the probe I need, but if it wasn't, um, we need to verify that we are selected on the correct probe. So it says channel one, and under probe, I'm gonna click that. It says test volts, or test lead volts DC. Now, we don't wanna use any of those other settings right now. Peak detect, we can turn that on. Um, I don't think we really need it. We're gonna get a lot more noise on the signal right now. Filter, we don't wanna filter any of that noise out. Inverted, we don't really need that. Coupled AC, we don't need that right now either. Scale, 20 volts. Um, the next lowest scale is 10 volts. That puts us out of the range of what our battery is. So our battery is gonna start at around 12 volts, 12 and a half-ish volts normally. Um, as we crank the engine, it's gonna drop down. And then as the alternator starts to work, it's going to rise above that point, up to maybe 15 volts on some vehicles on startup. So a 20 volt scale 
is where we're going to need to be. The next thing we need to do is adjust the time base. So PicoScope and Snap-on do it a little bit differently. Pico, you take kind of a big capture and you zoom in. Snap-on, you zoom in and take a bunch of, it takes a bunch of little captures and then you're allowed to zoom out. So on the Snap-on scope, we want to start in as fine a detail as we actually want and then we can look out and see the bigger picture. Um, they call this the sweep. If you're confused on which one is sweep and which one is scale, the sweep, think of sweeping the floor. So that is going to be along the bottom. Scale is how big something is, so that's gonna be over on the side. So our sweep, for most battery starting system, charging system tests, I go around 200 milliseconds. It doesn't always have to be the exact amount. You can play with this. If you wanna see something that isn't showing up on that, you can zoom in a little bit. If you wanna see a bigger picture, you can zoom out a little bit. Um, but we can always zoom out later, so we normally don't have to zoom out unless you want more total capture time. So 200 milliseconds, is that all we need? We could turn on the slope, but it's not a rapidly changing signal that we're gonna be watching. We're just gonna go in and start the vehicle up, let it run for a second, shut it off, and come back and analyze the data. That's how I typically do it. So now that we are set up, we're tied to the battery, we're on a 20 volt scale, volts DC, 200 millisecond sweep. I'm gonna start the car, I'm gonna jump back out here, and we're gonna analyze the data. Now we need to hit the stop button at the bottom of the screen. And sometimes you have to do this kind of quickly so we don't you know, let all that information slide off the end of the buffer because it can only hold so much information. And now we have a screen with not a whole lot of information on it, right? We're looking at our battery voltage basically. Well, we need to zoom back out because we're zoomed in at that last frame and we have to zoom out to find where the information was over here. So at the bottom right of the screen, if you're using the Modus or Triton, that zoom button's up on top. Hit that zoom, it's gonna zoom all the way out and then allow us to zoom back in to the section that we want. So you can kind of pick somewhere in between, but the first click of the zoom zooms us all the way out. And then on the Verus and the Zeus, if you double tap with the stylus on the screen where you wanna zoom into, it'll go all the way back up to one. And then I normally zoom back out to eight or 16 find out where I'm actually at, and then I can adjust the screen from there. Um, you may want to use the little arrows at the bottom to kind of bounce around if you're off a little bit. So we're going to start right here, and now that I'm zoomed in, we can kind of get a feel of what happened here. We were around 12 volts. We dropped down when that starter kicked in. It kind of leveled out, but it was still below 12 volts, and that's where the engine's actually cranking and is trying to start. It always takes a little more energy to get it moving, so that's why we dropped so low at the beginning. And then you can see here over on the right of my scanner screen, the voltage kind of jumped up a little bit. And that's where the alternator kicked in. We, we were running at that point. It's charging the battery back up. So let's jump in back to our lowest point here. And there's a few things we're going to want to look at. For one, we want to see how low the voltage actually dropped during the cranking episode. So there's two ways we can do that. We already captured a min-max um, for this, we just didn't know it. So if you're used to using a DVOM and you flip over to that min-max setting and hook up to the battery and crank it, and then go back and look at what my lowest voltage was, the scanner already, or the scope did that for us already. So if we shrink that scope setting menu back down, it's gonna completely disappear on the first click, and then the second click, it's going to show us some additional information. So it's gone, I'm gonna click it again, and now it says our live voltage is 12.57. Well, we're not recording, so we don't have a live voltage, but that was the last voltage that it captured. But our minimum voltage is on the screen, and that was 8.81. Now that's not too bad. Um, typically you don't wanna drop below like nine volts. Um, some say 9.6, some people say seven volts. Um, depending on how closely you're looking at that, um, some Chrysler's are a little more sensitive to it if they drop below you know, nine volts or 8.8. .8 they will actually reset and the computer starts doing some weird stuff. But I'm happy with the 8.8. .8. But what was my voltage before that? What was my static battery voltage? Well, in order to see and kind of measure voltage in different places, we need to turn on some cursors. So I'm gonna turn on some cursors, I'm gonna hit show, and you can either adjust them on this screen or we can close that and we can adjust them um, on the big screen just by dragging the cursors left and right. 
Now the modus is gonna be a little bit different. You'll have to use the little arrows to sweep it left and right. So if you notice also at the bottom right, it says cursor one, cursor two, and it tells us what the voltage was at that time. And it also gives us the difference or the delta between those two points. So before we started it, cursor number one, we were at 12.36. Well, that tells me that my battery is a little bit discharged. I don't drive this vehicle a lot, so it does a lot of sitting and it does a lot of short trips when I do drive it to work. So that's pretty normal. Every once in a while I charge it up, get it, that battery charged back up to full um, and go from there. But a good charged battery, if I was gonna load test this, I would wanna make sure that that battery is over 12.6. Now let me drag the other cursor over to that low point, which is kind of right behind that dotted line. That's just showing me where the center of our screen is. If I zoom all the way in, that dotted line goes away, but I do have to readjust my cursors. So that low point is 8.88, um, real similar to what it said our minimum was. I probably just have to tweak it a little bit but I kind of want to see where the voltage was while it was doing its engine rotations, not while it was getting the engine going. So I'm going to move our cursor over here to the right. We can see the little humps. That's where the engine's turning over. Each piston as it goes up takes a little more energy so the voltage goes down and so on. But at that area, we're at 11 volts. That's pretty decent. It's an interstate battery. It's from January of 2018, so it's a couple years old, um, but it's still doing a pretty good job it probably just needs recharge if I checked it with a battery tester it'd probably say recharge battery good so what about our alternator was our alternator doing what it was supposed to be doing well we can scoot over on the screen here actually down at the bottom it says our maximum voltage was 14.7 so that means that that alternator did kick in and was charging 14.7 for a while um, but we could we could zoom in and measure it put a cursor there and see so as we can see here the voltage is fairly stable and both my cursors show 14.11. So at one point it bumped up a little bit to 14.7, I'm not sure where, but throwing a cursor on there, 14.1, that's an adequate amount. The alternator is doing its job, it's trying to charge up that battery a little bit. Some vehicles you may see even 15 volts after startup as it really tries to, to replenish the battery from the starting event. So let me just zoom out a little bit. I'm gonna turn off my cursors. And I'm just gonna leave ourselves with this screen here. This screen here shows my initial battery voltage. It shows what my battery voltage dropped down to and what my alternator put out once it started charging. So this is you know, kind of the basic overview at this point. You know, I may decide to uh, screenshot it because on this screen it also shows me what my minimal voltage and my maximum voltage is in a voltage value and not just a display on the screen. So if you guys want to participate in this series, um, remember that link is down below for the Facebook group. So go ahead and join the group. Every week I'll post up a new test with a video on how to do that test. You guys during the week can hopefully find a suitable vehicle to grab the scope, do a quick scope capture. And honestly, if I was doing this without filming the whole thing and hooked it up and started the car, this is a less than a one minute test. And that includes the time for me to plug in the probes or the, the test leads to the scanner. So super quick test, it gives me quite a bit of information. Now in the next video, we are gonna build upon this test and in the future, we'll add a few more accessories in as well. The first couple of videos, I'm gonna go with no accessories because not everyone has scope accessories, but quite a few people have a scope with the voltage leads. So if you have questions or comments for this video, put them down below. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Remember, if you wanna see the whole series, subscribe, click the bell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.